All right, how many of you heard the famous speech from Obama that's blowing up now? <laughs> so Obama, he gave this statement on the news, and then it was pretty chilly that a lot of Christians got upset over it, actually. So, quote, you cannot sit back and wait for a savior. You can't opt out because you don't feel sufficiently inspired by this or that particular candidate. We don't need a Messiah. All we need are decent, honest, hardworking people who are accountable and who have America's best interest at heart. So you'll notice right here that Obama, he gave the speech that we don't need a savior. We don't need a Messiah. Okay, so this pen is running out. I'm going to get a new pen. Hold on one second. It's on the PBS News. You can watch that on PBS News. And the, t the title is literally Obama uh, says we don't need a savior. This happened last week. This happened last week. Okay, there we go. That's dark enough. So Obama said that we don't need a savior. Don't wait for a messiah. Because why? We're the ones who are going to have to take matters in our own hand. This is a post-millennial statement. This is a post-millennial doctrine you got to understand. We don't have to wait for a Messiah. No, we wait for our Messiah to come again. We have to wait for our Messiah to come so that he can set things right, set the kingdom in order. That's what we need. So we need our Messiah to come real soon. But... What Obama's doing is proclaiming the New World Agenda. This is something that even Rick Warren himself was talking about, bringing, building God's kingdom on earth. This is what the Catholics were talking about, bringing a kingdom on earth. This is a post-millennial doctrine. What does post-millennial mean, Pastor? Post-millennial, what it means is that the 1,000-year reign of God, millennial, is going to come after. After what? We bring in the kingdom ourselves. Mankind themselves have to bring in the kingdom. So what's really interesting with what we see in this new world order was that it happened ever since the beginning and it would have started way back at Genesis chapter 11 go there Genesis chapter 11 now keep your hand at the book of Psalms keep your hand at the book of Psalms Genesis chapter 11 this happened a long long time ago the first NWO the first new world order but then what did the Lord do he wrecked it he wrecked it this happened at the Tower of Babel and guess what? They would have made it up. They would have made it up. If you have the power of Satan and demons involved, they could have accomplished something weird right there. Because during the antediluvian era, during Noah's era, there was like weird stuff going on. But uh, let's look at right here, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as a journey from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they say, Go to, let us. You see that? All of us. We got to get involved. God is not in the picture. It's mankind doing it together as an effort. Whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Look at that. Mankind boasting of themselves. Let us do it. Let us make a name. We're going to reach Godhood. We're going to reach up to heaven. Now go to the book of Psalms, chapter 94. Chapter 94. That's a fulfillment of the tribulation. You need people bringing in a kingdom without God. They need to do it without the one true God. It's mankind, they themselves. God only helps those who help themselves, is the famous saying. So that's what they're trying to promote. Look at the book of Psalms, chapter 94, and we will read verse 1. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom 
vengeth belongeth. Show thyself. When does God show himself publicly to the world and bring down his vengeance? Hmm. Remember? Day of vengeance. Day of vengeance. The day of vengeance would be referring, if you look up that word in your Bible, it would be referring to the tribulation time period when God comes down. And when God comes down at the day of vengeance, it's a tribulation context. What happens at the tribulation then? So we know this is the tribulation. Left up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Okay, we know he's definitely going to do that during the tribulation. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? That's right. We are, see, waiting through that. The wicked are triumphing. And we're waiting for the Lord to cast down his vengeance. So this is definitely tribulation context. Now look at this. How long, verse 4, how long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity, what? Boast themselves. Uh -huh. You know what Obama was doing? Rile them up. You guys need to do it. We need to do it. We don't need a savior. We don't wait for a Messiah. Look, no, God is not in this picture. Let us build a tower that would reach right, to heaven. Amen. God taught them a lesson. Yeah. Did mankind learn their lesson years later? No, we still don't learn our lesson. So we're trying to build it up ourselves. Not only that, isn't our current, uh, isn't our current world system, the United Nations, doing this to Israel too? Verse 5, they break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. See that? Where nations are going against the nation of Israel more and more and more, that's getting closer. That's getting closer. And guess what? They will persecute Israel. The Antichrist will take over Israel. And then when he declares himself the true people of God, his true own following, the true Israel, the real Jews, what they're going to be doing is that they're going to be running away. They're going to be persecuted. And a lot of them who are lost, their eyes are going to be finally open to the truth. And they're going to get saved. Now let's look at Psalms chapter 10. Psalms chapter 10. Psalms 10. Notice once more we see that, this boasting. Psalms chapter 10. Now the context of Psalms chapter 10 is undoubtedly tribulation. How do you know that, Pastor? Because look at verse 15. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Who's the wicked? The evil man whose arm is broken. Only one passage. Zechariah 11, the Antichrist's arm is injured. But keep reading, seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Well, that's definitely apparent. That is future end time context, no doubt about it. God reigns as king. The heathen can no longer reign and prosper. Okay, since this context is undoubtedly end times, what's happening at end times? Let's look at verse 1. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? See that? Why, why are we waiting on the Lord? Why is, we're waiting on the Lord. Hopefully the Lord will cast his judgment soon. But we're waiting on it. Verse 2, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked, what? Boasteth of his heart's desire. That's right. That's what the wicked are doing. They're boasting their own desire, what they want, all about mankind. We want homosexual marriages. We want legalization of marijuana. We want toleration of all religions, their desire. And then keep reading, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. We're living in more and more of a social program, and the people want that because they want a handout from them. See, covetous, covetous, not willing to work with their own hands. Now, there are genuine people who need a need. I'm all for that. But if you're going to be very honest, there are people, and if you dealt with them, you know what I'm talking about. They're turning into a lazy process and a covetous process where they want to be fed and given a handout. That's what the Antichrist is going to offer them. He's going to persecute the genuine poor, the true poor, which is those who won't receive the mark in their right hand or forehead. And they're going to be starving to death. And then people get their handout through this system. When you get this system, we'll take care of you. 
So you'll notice right here that they are boasters. They are the ones who will bring in their own God, their own salvation. This is apparent at the book of Daniel. Go to the book of Daniel, chapter 11. Daniel 11. When the Antichrist comes in, he's not going to come in with the name of the true God. That's not what he's going to do. He's going to do a totally unique and brand thing. Look at Daniel chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 37. Verse 37. Uh, we're going to look at verse 36. Verse 36 to be in context. So we see here Genesis 11. And then we see here Daniel 11. Concerning what the Antichrist will do. God has to be out of this picture. And then what glorifies is mankind. That's the definite sign of the last days we're in. Is that God is out of the picture and we elevate mankind. Humanism. Humanism as taught in schools. Daniel chapter 11 verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the God of God. See, we don't need God. We don't need a Messiah. It's all mankind. We do something. Mm -hmm. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. So notice right here, they're going to be prosperous in doing this. Verse 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above all. So notice right here that they totally reject God out of this picture and it's going to be elevated with mankind, but to be more honest, himself. Verse 38, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, Satan, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. So you know what the tactic is? The tactic of the Antichrist is to basically give a similar statement like, we don't need a savior. We don't wait for a Messiah. It's all about man, man, man. No God, no God. It's going to be man, man, man. But his true heart and attention is me. That's right. I'm the one. You need some sort of leader, though. We're not going to wait for a Messiah, wait for a Savior, but you do need a leader, so we need your vote. And that is what Obama said. Yeah. Obama, after he said, you don't, don't wait for a Savior, you don't need a Messiah, stuff like that, then he says, but you need to vote. You need to vote in someone as a leader who will take care of things. So, what a hypocrite right there. Because he says right here, and as a fellow citizen, not as an ex-president, but as a fellow citizen. See, I'm just like you. I'm humble like you. You know, It's not about me. I'm here to deliver a simple message. And that is that you need to vote. Because our democracy depends upon it, on it. And they'll step up and they'll join our government. And they will make things better if they have support. Wait, wait, I thought you said don't need a savior, don't, need, don't wait for a messiah, stuff like that. One election will not fix everything that needs to be fixed, but it will be a start. And you have to start. That's giving them a challenge, a motivation to actually vote in their leader. So they're going to wait. So they're not going to wait for a Messiah and a Savior, but they're going to acknowledge some leader to take care of everything for them. And you know what's scary about this? I'm not saying Obama's the Antichrist, but I do know this. There's a lot of things about him that's a very good picture when the official Antichrist comes out. He may very well be in the future. He may not be. I don't know. But it is very disturbing that in February 2008, Michelle Obama praised her husband as being, quote, the only person who knew, quote, that at some level there's a hole in our souls while claiming, while she claimed that he could fix our souls. Here's another one. This is disturbing. You can find this online, too. There's a bunch of kids who gathered together and sang praise to Obama. But you know, what, you know what they took? They took a hymn. They took one of the hymns. They took the battle hymn of the Republic, which is supposed to be talking about God wiping down his enemies and setting up his kingdom. They took that anthem and replaced it with Obama. The lyrics go, 
Mm -mm -mm. Barack Hussein Obama, he said that all must lend a hand to make this str country strong again. Mm -mm -mm. Barack Hussein Obama, he said we must be fair today. Equal work means equal pay. There's the Antichrist, right? Six, 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 equal, 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 everybody. Mm -mm -mm. Hello, Mr. President, we honor you today. Here goes their battle hymn of the Republic. Hello, Mr. President, we honor you today. Oh, wait, wait, doesn't the Antichrist exalt himself? He receives the honor at Daniel 11. For all your great accomplishments, we all doth say hooray. Hooray, Mr. President, you're number one, the first black American to lead this great nation. Hooray, Mr. President, we honor your great plans to make this country's economy, economy, here you go, equal 666, 666, I'm going to fix your economy, to make this country's economy number one again. And remember, he said you don't need a savior. We're not waiting for a messiah. But behind the scenes, what do they want? You need a leader, and we need all the world to back up this, to bring in this leader one day. And guess what? When they bring in the leader, people will worship. They will worship. They will honor it as God and Messiah. Not now. It's all done in humility. We're going to do it. Let's put in an effort together. All we need is a leader. But that's just the same thing with the Catholics. We don't worship Mary. We only honor her. See, that's the tactic of mankind. Mankind, they will worship this leader one day. They will worship this leader one day.